Ugh, there's just so many weeds. I'm never gonna finish this lawn. I wish there was some better way to do this. Did someone say they're having problems with weeds in the lawn? Me, look at my lawn. Yeah, we need to go to my office. Comfy? Uh, sure. All right, a problem like yours, you got a lot going on, all right? Your lawn was full of weeds. So the first step is we need to identify the weeds, okay? And there are different types of weeds. So we break those into these primary classifications. Is it grass, like crabgrass or annual bluegrass? Is it a grass-like weed, something like sedges or rushes? Or is it a broadleaf, dandelion, white clover, black medic? Those would be examples. And here's some examples here of each of those categories. And so once we identify the type, that helps us narrow it down to try to get a specific identification of each of the weed species you're dealing with. Because this okay. is important because we need to know a little bit about their life cycle and their biology so that we know exactly how to target them with control measures. Uh, and it'll also allow us to pick specific control measures. So how do you ID these weeds, right? That's a question that I often get, and the turf doctor is not going to be there for every lawn. I've got a lot of clients. And so one thing that I would point you to would be Virginia Tech has a weed identification webpage that you can check out. There are a number of resources here for helping or guiding you through the process of identifying that weed. You can also use an application on your phone. Phone applications are really good at identifying blooming plants, but not quite as good. Sometimes they'll do okay with vegetative stage plants, sometimes maybe not, but they're still a useful resource. Now, the most important thing that I want you to walk away with today is that your primary means of controlling weeds is actually through growing your lawn grass. The lawn grass actually outcompetes the weeds and prevents them from becoming problematic in the first place. So the more that we do with cultural practices to increase the happiness and healthiness of your lawn grass, the more we suppress weeds, because that's exactly what your lawn grass will be doing for you. Some examples of cultural practices that we would use to do this would be mowing height. Okay, if you're using tall fescue in your lawn and the primary or desirable mowing height for that grass is between three and four inches, and yet you're over here mowing at one and a half to two inches, that could be problematic because what you're gonna do is displace the tall fescue with weeds that are more adapted to that lower mowing height. Fertilizer, when to apply it and how much to apply is extremely important. Using our tall fescue example, you apply most of your fertilizer in the fall of the year and you would wanna consult Virginia Corporate of Extension web pages to determine how much fertilizer that should be applied for each type of grass that you're managing in your lawn and also when to apply those products. And finally, I cannot stress enough the value of a soil test. So we test our soil to determine if there's a pH imbalance because the pH drives the availability of fertilizer to the turf or also if there's an imbalance in uh, other types of minerals that may need to be added to address that. So soil tests are extremely important. But how do I control my weeds right now? Right, because oh, you have a lot of weeds. I mean, your lawn is pretty crappy, but it's okay. We can do that. There are a number of methods that you can use to control those weeds. And we break those down into categories as well. The first, I'm just gonna knock out in the interim. It's not necessarily gonna help you right now, but we need to cover it for the purposes of our discussion today, and that's preventative weed control. When we talk about prevention, we talk about keeping that plant from making its way into your landscape. Ways that we would do that would be, for example, if you're going to use new mulch in your landscape beds, or if you're going to use compost on your lawn uh, to improve the soil, you want to inspect that material beforehand to make sure there aren't any new weed species that you might be bringing into your landscape. That's preventative weed control. Things like planting a windbreak would be a preventative measure to keep seed from your neighbor's property growing into your property. Okay, but that's not going to help you right now, right? So let's talk about the things that you can do. There's mechanical control. No one likes to hear that one. 
We're talking hand pulling the weeds. And I think that's not a viable option for most of the species that you have because your lawn's pretty crappy, no, no offense. But the other one would be chemical. And this is, for situations like yours, probably the most appropriate. But there are a number of things that you need to know in order to implement chemical controls properly. Time out, time out. If we don't stop Dr. Askew now, he might never quit talking but he's given us some great information. First of all, we've learned the importance of, of being able to identify a weed and what are some of the tools that we can use to help us identify those weeds. Number two, he's given us some great cultural programming strategies, such as growing a thick, dense, healthy lawn is the best weed control program. And you, the way you grow a thick, dense, healthy lawn is you raise the cutting height. You choose a fertility program that's appropriate for your lawn and its use, and you use soil tests periodically to help you grow not only a healthy turf, but also have a healthy soil. Now the turf doctor has done a great job of setting the stage for us in terms of how to, as he scientifically put it, not have a crappy lawn. But we've still got a lot to go because we haven't talked about chemical controls yet. In part two, he's gonna tell us about what types of herbicides there are, how to choose them, how to time their application, and then maybe of most importance, how to work with the label, because the label is gonna tell you how to let the product work the way it should, but also to protect you, others, your pets, and the environment. We hope you found this information useful. And if you want more information, we'd like you to use the QR code on your screen to take you to the Virginia Tech Turfgrass website. That's where you're gonna find a lot more information on how to grow a healthy lawn. Also, don't forget that your local Virginia Cooperative Extension Office is there with personnel and resources to help you have a great looking, healthy lawn and landscape and do so in an environmentally responsible manner.